Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky, your host, Jace, your host, CJ, and we are back. Just like we said, we would be another week, except this week is another pay per view. I know we just had one two weeks ago, but we're back. UFC 286 is here. Leon Edwards is taking on Kamara Usman again. Uh, how you guys feeling about the upcoming pay per view? Uh, I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I'm excited, of course. It's fight weekend, so. But the card is kind of, mm, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of looking a little iffy. They could have they could have stacked it out a little bit more for the London car. But I'm excited. I'm always excited for Saturday fight night. How you feeling, Jace? Yo, I'm going to keep it 2003, man, um, for all those young bucks out there. <clears throat> the card for me, I'm going to concur with you. It, it's a hype for me, dog. It's a hype for me. Obviously, I'm ready to see... Uh, I, I don't know. Me and Scott was talking about this. I'm actually more excited for the co-main event than the main event. I could be wrong. We could be wrong. I just, I feel like I know how the story is going to end. You know what I mean? On the main event. Hold on. You always say you know the story, but your stories don't be written right, bro. <laughs> your stories be written backwards. <laughs> We can't trust you no more, bro. Yo, your crystal ball was wrong. Yeah, the mic cut out. Wrong. I didn't hear you. Sorry. The mic cut out. My bad. Hey, J-Soft got it wrong. Uh, so. And if you guys uh, don't know what we're talking about, refer to last week's episode. Uh, there was a different host here. Uh, it wasn't Jace. It was J-Soft, the cousin of um, Gandalf. And Gandalf told us, or sorry, excuse me, Jaysoft told us that your boy Peter Yam was going to get it done. That mm -hmm. was a lie. 50-45 uh, <laughs> across the board. Uh, Marab Dwalis really just did what he does. A complete machine ran through Peter Yam. Uh, uh, Jace, do you speak for Jaysoft? So listen, I, I've associated with Jace off and he wanted to <laughs> remind the millions <sighs> and millions fans out there that he did go 50%, one for two, which is, of course, beneath his standard. He feels terrible. It felt putrid. But facts is facts, 50%. You broke even. So you say 50%. What was the one you got right? Span. I said he was going to get rocked. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just like, 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 let's tell the full story here now, okay? Let's tell, let's tell it all. Uh, so how did you feel about, you know, your boy? Because we know you love some Peter Yan. Like, how did you feel about seeing him crumble? So here's my thing, and I'm really scared because I'm thinking Peter Yan, uh, CJ and Sky, if you remember, Stephen Thompson, who's also my guy, right? He got to the high mountain where he had fought Woodley twice, narrowly lost both times, and then just wasn't the same fighter. And I'm really terrified that with Peter Yan, it might be the exact same thing where he reached that mountaintop and now he's just plateauing and I'm low key in my feelings because I do still fuck with Peter Yan. Yeah, hey, Peter's he's a real good fighter, but. Like what I, t I, the, I love the fight. It was a super exciting fight. I've been hearing people saying it's boring, it's boring, it's boring. Marab went out there and just did his damn thing, and he just dismantled him from the top to the bottom, and he outstruck him, he out grappled him, he outpaced him, he out hustled him, he just broke him down spiritually, spiritually, mentally, physically. He just broke his everything down. I, I love the fight, you know. And Jan is a good fighter, but he's just not evolving. He's not uh, evolving. You know, that's a really good point that you make, CJ, is that he's not evolving. And I think a lot of people get there, especially because us as fans, like, we hype we hype a lot of these fighters up. Like, when we seen Jan, you know, do what he did to Jose Aldo, we was like, oh, my God. Like, we, we put him up here. And... Anything, and then you had the fight with uh, Algermain and the illegal knee, and he looked good against Aljo, so then it was like, oh, it's just because of the knee. And then when he lost to Aljo, people were like, no, you know, he actually won. Then when he lost to Sean, it was like, no, he actually won. And it's like, really what we're doing is we're seeing what we want to see. We're picking who we want to win. And the thing is, I guarantee you, if you go back and you look at those fights, you'll see 
a lack of evolution, like you just said, but you can't see it while it's happening because you're so invested in what you want the storyline to be, what you want yeah. uh, to happen inside of it. So that that's a really good point to make. Yeah, Marab, uh, it, anybody, I think anybody that would have been in that cage with him would have broke. It was just relentless. And, and I was talking to somebody else and they're trying to throw the PEDs, go get to you side and all that. Sometimes a lot of people don't know how it is to have that will and that dog in you and just to go take something that you really want. You seen it was beef in there all week long. They was going at it. Bro just wanted it a thousand times more than than Yon did. And it showed. It clearly, clearly showed. Purely dismantled him. From the start to finish. I mean, Yon had no idea what was going on. I was in the middle of moving and I texted Jason. I'm like, your boy is getting... Molly Wop. Your boy is getting <laughs> beat up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was hard. I mean, because I'm watching and just waiting for him to turn it on. And, you know, it's awesome. like sometimes when you got that 91 Crown Victoria trying to get this bitch to start <laughs> and it just won't turn over. <laughs> gas, gas, puddle, puddle, bitches <laughs> won't turn over. <laughs> yeah. Like a drummer beat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, shout out to Marab because he, he came in, he did exactly what he's supposed to do. Um, of course, the champion is Aljamain Sterling currently. They are best friends to the point, you know, he's taking Aljamain back to Georgia. Uh, uh, Aljo's taking him back to Jamaica. They've been very vocal about the fact they're not going to fight each other. So with Henry Cejudo coming into the picture, getting ready to... Oh, wait, before we even jump into that, if you've seen on the rankings... Uh, Marab is now number one. He has jumped over Sugar Sean O'Malley. How do you guys feel about that? I, I can dig it. I definitely could dig it, especially the way he just beat up Yon the way he did. O'Malley was mm -hmm. in a war with Yon, and Marab made that shit look easy. <laughs> you know, styles make fights, but it was there was no controversy in that fight at all. And then people are always saying like, oh, Jan downloads data. He does this. I'm like, bro, is not a robot. He's a human and he can break and he fucking broke. <laughs> and they say it's it's five round fight. He's going to start turning it on. <laughs> what was that crown Vic doing? It sputtered out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just feel like this is the first like actual fight that Jan lost. You know, I know I disagree with the panel because I feel like he... Definitely beat O'Malley, definitely beat uh, Aljo um, the first and second time. And this was a fight that he definitively, there's nothing to talk about. Like, motherfucker, take your lunch money. Um, as far as the ranking goes, who cares? Right? We talk about it all the time with the rankings. Yep, and especially yep. when we look at the pound for pound rankings, I'm like, how does this actually fucking make sense? Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't. Does it. it doesn't. So, you I mean, who cares? I think they're putting pressure on O'Malley um, as well. I think they're putting pressure on Jan. You know, I guess the real a, a real question is, you know, is about teammates fighting each other. Should they be forced to fight kind of a thing? Like, that's, I think, more of the, the conversation. I say uh, no. I don't think they should be forced to. Um, you know, we know in the past they've tried to, like, even with, like, uh, John Jones and Rashad Evans, Rashad Evans, like they tried that and, you know, mysteriously somebody ended up hurt or this pulled out, you know, stuff like that. But it's like, I don't think they should be forced to. Okay. But the, the counter argument to that is right. If they are in the same division and they're ranked one and two, or this team's champion one, it literally like hurts the division, right? There's a roadblock there, you know, we always want to see that number one fighter fight the I champion. Know, yeah. You know what I mean? So then, like, what the fuck are we really doing here? If we're not going to get that in that we are clamoring for, then why even allow them to move up the rankings? Uh, because the sport of MMA is made in such a way that you they have you have these super gyms, you have these gyms where, where people are cross training with each other. They're all inside of the same division, right? Um, and for me, it's, it's different than like any other sport, right? Because this is a sport where you're literally going in and punching and kicking somebody in the damn head, you know? So although you might want to see number one, and number two, I've been training with this person. Like they actively train with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. You have Marab saying that Aljo can beat him. 
So what are we talking about? We, we just want to just make the fight just to say that, oh, we made the number one contender fight. Like the man is in the octagon in front of millions of people talking about Aljo's the real champion and he beat him. Like there's nothing else that we need to know. Yeah, I, I agree with both of you guys, honestly. And I was just listening to the Boisterous Boys yesterday. Shout out to them, San Diego. You know how we doing. But SUNY, he's a fighter there. And he was talking about he had kind of both ways. And uh, Hendo asked him. So would you fight one of your friends? And he said, I couldn't do it. But he was saying in this situation with uh, Marab and Aljo they, that they need to. Because he was like, with me and my friend, I wouldn't be able to go 100%. You know, I have to break this guy's face. Damn near try to kill this guy. And I've lived with him. I broke bread with him. I've spent money with him. Whatever, whatever, whatever. He said he wouldn't be able to go 100%. So that could be the same way how they will be. You know what I'm saying? And if you're going into the cage, it got to be 100,000% all go at all times. So, you know, yeah. it's it's up to them to make that contract if they want to do it or not. So, Because yeah. it, it's completely different. Like, I seen this clip earlier, and it was like two brothers that were wrestling for the Nationals. And the the youngest, the younger, what whatever. One of the brothers won, obviously. They were wrestling each other, you know. And people are like, oh, this is what Marab and Aldo should do. And it's just like... Yeah, wrestling is 100% different than se than trying to separate somebody from consciousness. Like you said, like I don't I'm not necessarily going to go 100%, you know, um on my sibling as I would as somebody else. Like it's yep. just not the and, and and we get it. They're not brothers, you know, genetically, but at the end of the day, like if two people are saying that they don't want to fight each other, then guess what? Marab is the one that's suffering. Marab's the one that's going to have to, you know, potentially fight other contenders if Aljo continues to win. You know, that's something that they'll have to, you know, decide as to what they want to do. Aljo said that he wants to go up to 145. I think it's a terrible idea for him. Um, but he's tired of making the weight cut. He, you know, he walks around in like 170 pounds, and he's cutting down to 135. So that's a big weight cut for him. Um, so I think they're all working it out. And, hey, if he wants to be like, you know, I have my time here, or if Henry Cejudo takes him out, then, you know, it is what it is. But... 135 is looking good. 135 does not have, like, anybody in the top 10 could be a champ. Yeah. It's exciting through and through in that division. I love yeah. that division. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other highlights that you guys wanted to uh, talk about from last weekend's card? Uh, I'm sure CJ wanted to talk about, you know, the Dagestani losing. Hey, Viva Mexico. Keep on. Keep on. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Keep that was on. a great fight. That was a it's great a real fight. Let's say Saeed won that fight. Before I don't no. care, he 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 lost. <laughs> no, I feel like he won. Yeah, you think it so? Close. It was super close. I, I thought he lost, but I thought again, it's a coin flip. I'm not upset yeah. either way. And then uh, real fast, and then we can move on. Shout out to Volkov, man. That was a different Volkov that I've ever seen. Like he was fucking nasty and mean, and showed that leg, you know, hit that knee the entire time, saying, "Bro, if you shoot, you're gonna be spitting out your fucking teeth." Loved it. <laughs> Back. I thought Move it was a, a a very good card for a fight night. You know, people miss this one. They miss they. It was a from top to bottom. A lot of like young prospects coming through. It was a good card. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um. I know. Real quickly. Um. I didn't get a chance to watch. Uh. On Friday, because once again, I've been moving all weekend. But you know, your boy Usman Nurmagomedov. Now we just talked about Saeed. Saeed is not a part of the Habib lineage. He's not that type of. He's from Dagestan, but he ain't them. This man Usman, that's Habib's cousin, cousin, and uh, <laughs> you know. Yo, shout out to uh, that. Hmm, as I like to call question mark kick. He fucked his world up. Now he is a different type of fighter than all the other Dakasani fighter because he is a kicker. He comes out there with these super cool dynamic kicks. You know what I mean? Um, interesting problem for someone to be that dynamic on the feet, combined with you know the grappling ability. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he kicked them so fast as you know when they come together and they kind of, because he fell too. I was like, what just happened? I didn't even know what happened until they slowed it down. I was like, God damn, that was beautiful. It was like, it was so fast, I couldn't even see the kick. So I see how ben, uh, Hendo got smacked up with that one. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out to Hen Hendo though. Kick that nigga in retirement. 
<laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do so, that. So I, I know. Let's hit the crystal ball for one second. Let's say this tournament works out the way we all want it to for number one and number two to fight. Does AJ have a chance? No. Damn. I love AJ. That's my guy. That was fast. <laughs> Does he have a chance? Listen, me being the the Did main, the regular guy. Yes, he has a chance. Yes, he has a chance. <laughs> Is it a big chance? Probably not, but he got a chance. You feel me? You know what, CJ, you're right. He does have a chance. It's <laughs> he a does fist have fight. A this is a fist fight, but dude, if I had to bet... No, I'm not putting I'm money go, on I'm going, exactly, exactly. 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 CJ, what, what about... <laughs> what about hey. Who am I going? Who am I going for? You know who I'm going for. Hey, look, I'm gonna tell you this this right now. My my picks will be messed up all year long, but I don't care. I'm gonna tell you this right now. Ryan Spam messed it up for me the week before. All my picks was wrong. I don't care. It you is what it is. It? You know who did it though? MVP. MVP. Oh, gang. Did it. <laughs> Nasty. Nasty. That might be the most Nasty. violent person in <laughs> MMA, bro. Like that is it's horrible. It's bad. That was so like CJ texted me and was like, "Oh my god, did you see the kick?" And like I went on Instagram instantly, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is disgusting!" And I'm like, I try to get Danny to look at it. She's like, "No, I don't want to see. It. I don't want to see." It. <laughs> that was terrible. Brutal, brutal. Yeah, you got to make sure your insurance is right fighting MVP because something <laughs> gonna go bad, go bad with him. Man. Um, yeah, so dynamic. What's his name? Platinum Mike T Perry just entered the chat. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so there was some good, you know, fights that were going on. You said uh, one FC is going on this weekend too, right? Friday. It's early in the morning though. Uh, oh, speaking of early, so UFC 286 oh, here yeah, on the West number. Coast is early. I checked. I was like just thinking about it, and I went and I looked. So for the West Coast, the best coast, you know, uh, starting at 10 a.m. The early prelim started at 10 a.m. The prelim started at 12. And the main card starts at two. So we are getting an early fight card. So, you know, don't show up, you know, <laughs> at your normal one, two o'clock getting ready to watch a fight because it's going to be over. Uh, you're going to be upset. Uh, so let, let's get into it. Uh, we briefly touched on like how we thought this card looked in comparison. It's not as stacked, but we know that the cards that, that don't jump out at you are usually the ones where it's just like, boom, boom you know, start city. Um, Shout out to Juliana Miller, Juju from San Diego, uh, the tough winner from season 30. Yes, yeah, season 30 tough winner. She's fighting Ten on planet, the card. baby. Ten yep. planet. <laughs> Making her debut. Um, Eddie Bravo. <laughs> um, Luana Carolina, she's awake from the Molly, from the Molly elbow. Uh, <laughs> so, you know. Uh, let's see. Um, really, like we don't have to go throughout the whole thing. Uh, shout out to Muhammad Mukayev, uh, undefeated prospect. I'm excited to see him. But, you know, let's not even sidestep and act like we really care. Did you guys know Marvin Vittori was on this card? Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all know Marvin was on this card? Yo, on a real quick note, like shout out to the fan favorite, Brian Barbarina. Guy's a fucking savage. Win, lose, or draw absolute savage i love that dude Come he's about to get choked it. out i can't see it. who is he fighting gunner gunner, oh, gunner nelson. nelson yeah gunner's yeah. gonna choke him out <laughs> i don't know why they got this old gunner picture up here like gunner hasn't been in the ufc for years like y'all put like his first picture up like what is that that's wild Absolutely. uh roman roman delize he's on here i'm excited the last time we seen him Hit him with that nasty calf slicer into a ground and pound. It was just disgusting. I'm excited to see what he's going to do against Marvin Vittori. I mean, that's going to be interesting. That's an interesting fight right there. Yeah. I really just want someone to start Vittori because I don't want him calling for a title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like his face. You know, like I don't like his fighting style. It's just, he's just yeah. like the definition of just limp Mid. dick. Mid. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he makes me flaccid. <laughs> Speaking of being flaccid, Jace has a new name. <laughs> it is he's uh you can now refer to him as LaShawn Strickland. 
According, wild boy. <laughs> according to T Ball Paul on TikTok, shout out to T shout out to T Ball Paul. Uh he's now dubbed you as LaShawn Strickland. Elaborate. Well you're you the black Sean Strickland, bro. <laughs> so LaShawn the... Strickland. They gave you the name LaShawn. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, sure. Oh, it's the racy topics. That's what it is. Bring it. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. You know, um, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to talk to you in TikTok live. Be ready to defend it because I spit facts. You spit feelings. Let's go. Hey, JC White, too. That's racist. <laughs> Not on this way. <laughs> Shout out to you, uh, Paul, man, the goat. He not white, he Mexican. His dad and Jamaican, Mexican, and Jamaican. He's a Jamaican Mexican. Oh, he must be the hardest working motherfucker in the world. <laughs> hey, his videos is fire. His videos hey. do be fire. He must got seventeen jobs. Shit, <laughs> he do. Um, yeah. So this main event, like, if I was a paying customer, um, but y'all pay for the pay per views. But if I was, like, <laughs> this is not a pay per view that I'm paying for. I'm, I'm gonna tell you that right now. We have Marvin Matori versus Roman Delize, Jennifer Maya, shout out to Jennifer, uh, against Casey O'Neill, undefeated, Brian Barbarina versus Gunnar Nelson, Just now Justin Gaethje versus Rafael Faziz, and Leon Edwards versus Kamara Usman. That's not that's not $80. That's ooh, that's below mid. You, yeah. Mm. Like that's like that's, that's a fight like, night. That's fight night. Like if this was a fight night, I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? But like for pay-per-view, now granted, you know, they couldn't get Tom Aspinall because he's hurt. They couldn't get, uh, I don't know why they couldn't get Molly McCann. Uh, That's what Patty, I was about to say. Yeah, Patty's hurt. Um, Allen's already signed up to, to to beat Max. I mean, sorry, fight Max. I almost transformed through this camera. Oh, and choked you, out. <laughs> I, I, you know that I have a deep memory. I won't forget. The next time I see you, <laughs> the next time I see you, I'm gonna get you. I, I don't care. Um, yeah. So because and the reason why he couldn't fight is because his rib popped out because they were supposed to be the co-main on this card. Um, yeah. So this whole London takeover didn't really get to take on. So that's why they had to for sure do it at the O2. And so now you have this. Let's just really get into like the the co-main and the main event because that's really where the value's at. Fine. Justin Gaethje versus Rafael Faziz. How y'all feeling? CJ, spit. I'm I this is the fight I'm more interested in out of probably the whole card. You know, I, I don't I'm not up and down. I don't know who I'm rooting for in this because I really don't care about both of them like that. But I I think uh Gaethje's probably gonna pull it off. That's my prediction of the, the year, guys. Whatever. Uh I just want <laughs> pause. Pause. Check wait it, a second. It. Wait a <laughs> wait a second. Date and time, okay? Jace didn't have to turn into a dentist to pull teeth out of CJ. CJ just gave a prediction. Holy! Oh, duh. Wow! <laughs> he Hot gave take. it up. Hot take. Yeah, I just I just, I just got finished watching a uh, uh, Physio fight, fight Bobby Green, and you know I hate doing MMA math, but I was just thinking about you know Gaethje fighting. All the top guys, win or lose, he's then fought all the top guys, and he's been in the cage with some of the best. Win or lose, and I think Fiziev is this, you know, you fighting dudes like Bobby Green, I just need a little bit more, and I love Bobby Green, and his style matches up perfect with a lot of these strikers and stuff like that. But, you know, Bobby Green's at the bottom of the list, and you're not getting him up out of there, or the, the fight is close, and you get to the third round, and Bobby's styling on you like that. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, Gaethje hits hard. He will go to war. The leg kicks are there, so I'm a, I'm, I'm pulling for Gaethje a little bit more than Fiziev. What about you, Jace? How you feeling, bro? So, kind of what you spoke on, man, is like I think an issue where you know I'm getting tired of the same top people getting recycled, right? Me too. Me too. If I agree with you. Like, yeah. like Justin, every other fight, you know, oh, title shop. Dustin, every other fight, title shop. When you got yeah. your boy, you know, hardcore favorite, Benny Dayush on a yeah. eight-fight win streak and still can't sniff a fucking title, still making him walk through Charles Oliveira, which 
assuming if he loses that fight, Charles is going to call for a title shot. Yeah. So, you know, I want to give these new blood and, and make new household names because it is getting a little redundant. I'm actually like, I was telling Sky this, like, I'm kind of getting off the Justin bandwagon, you know, like maybe he's about to remind me, you know what I mean? Like we respect his fucking name, fair play. But to be fair, like, it's just it's just getting redundant. It's getting yeah. redundant. So I'm glad that he's actually given someone um, a, a fight, a shot who not is necessarily a household name. Um, that being said, you know, I hope uh, Physio styles on him. You know what I'm saying? Brother, I can a thousand percent agree with you. I ain't even going. <laughs> Are you right? What you think, CI? Uh, yeah, you. I'm leaning towards Justin. Um, I think the the calf kicks, the power, and his ability to stuff takedowns. Because um, most people don't necessarily shoot on him. And we've seen when Chandler tried to shoot on him, he wasn't successful. When when Justin has to pull out the wrestling, he can. Really? Um, Did you see the Habib fight? We're not talking. Everybody's going to lose to Habib. Period. Oh. Okay. I, I don't care what nobody says. Everybody's going to lose to Habib. Um even our beloved Tony Ferguson. Tony would have beat him. <laughs> Tony would have beat him. Stop putting some respect on his name. That's El Kakui. It's a boogeyman. Hey. Yes. Blazing Love it. Shades. shades, baby. Blazing <laughs> shades, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that dude. Listen, on a real quick side note, your boy Tony, t t t t Tony Ferg is, is just TV gold. He's just TV gold. He needs his own reality show. You know, he's he's so far away on Mars, and he's the shit that he says, blades and shades. Like, who who thinks this shit like that? I love it. Uh, him coming out with the with the baseball <laughs> for the for the press conference. Like, I'm the hitman. Like, come on, Tony. Huh? Come on. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Yeah, I know. I know. It's just like there's so much appreciation for Tony, and it's sad because like the newer fans. They've only seen Tony getting beat. That's all they know. They don't know 12 fight winning streak, just running through people, being an absolute menace, showing up like, oh God. You know, it's it's sad because we just love Tony so much and damn. Damn, damn, damn. Yeah. Huh. R.I.P. Um, yeah. So I'm with that being said, I'm 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 leaning towards Justin. The last I really remember of Fazeev's is him against Dos Anjos. He was losing the fight and then had the 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 uh, the KO in the fifth round. Um, and then prior to that, I remember the Bobby Green fight. And I remember it was a close fight. He still won, but like it was close. And Bobby was going off. Like Bobby really looked good. Um, and so those are my most recent re memories. Like I won't sit here and act like I really remember uh, Rafael Fazeev like that deep. Um, uh, Moyakano pause. too. Moyakano. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I heard it and I was like, <laughs> playing it in my head. <laughs> You're just running through teams like that, huh? That's, <laughs> gotta, that's gotta be the best pause of the pod. I swear. <laughs> that was perfect. <sighs> um, yeah. And somebody on TikTok today was, was reminding me of UFC 256. Um, with uh Moicano and Fazeez, but I didn't I don't recall. I know for a fact I watched the card, um, but I don't recall whether or not it was stopped early. I, I can't remember it uh too I well. Got, I, I got the video on my page and uh okay. that's the that's the three piece. He hit him with the smoothest combo, the pop pop, and then he dropped okay. him. It was nasty. You that commented on it like nasty. a while ago. Oh, like, okay. Like A one precision, it was woo. perfect. It was yes. perfect three piece in a soda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Extra dry biscuit. <laughs> Speaking of three piece in the soda, your boy Leon Rocky hey, Edwards. Hey, we get it kind of good with these little transits. <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> we do what we do. Hey, because I was going to tell you earlier, I was like, real, we flowed into that one kind of <laughs> high. <laughs> you know? A little Ollie Hoop. Uh, throw it yeah. down, big man. You know? Um, Shout out to Bill Walton. Right. Um, but San yeah, Diego. Leon, Dago. Leon Edwards <laughs> taking on the Kamaru Usman. Let's go. Who you got? What's going on? Go ahead, Jace. Um, I think Leon Edwards is going to be and new. Oh. Number one contender because he's gonna lose <laughs> the fight. 
<laughs> he's going to lose this fucking fight. He doesn't have a chance in blue hell. Your boy Kamaru is going to wet blanket him, going to have all the London fans just boo birds. Like the boo birds will be shouting everywhere, just the boo birds. And he's going to just wet blanket him, get him out of there. No doubt. Five rounds to zero. Any decision? Facial prediction. Well, I would like to say that um, it's a win-win for me. You already know how we rolling. It's two brothers, so it's a win-win. But black on black crime. <laughs> Never a win. Yeah. Um, but like Jay said, um, I hate doing this MMA math and all of that, but I think Kamaru's going to come out and get it again. But I'm liking what I'm seeing from uh, Leon. His confidence is high. His confidence was broken in that fight. He was broken. His 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 coach had to get him up out of there. And I, what I say last week, if there's time on the clock, your ass could get rocked. Hey. But it's not gonna happen this week. I don't think it's gonna happen this week. You know, Kamaru dominated the whole fight minus the first round in the last fifty seconds. <laughs> so let me see if my division, my multiplication, my adding and all that adds up. I think the Nigerian nightmare comes back with it and new. Facts and new Kamara Usman is going to get it done. Might not be pretty. You might not like it. Might not entertain you. But hey, do what you have to do. If that's laying on this man and just hey, foot stomping him, being a big brother, bullying him, making him go back to his corner looking like a little kid, all dejected, can't look his uh coach in the eye. Hey, do what you got to do because that's the only way to get it done. Um he and and I went back and I watched the fight and like he was actually winning the striking exchanges with Leon in in that second fight. Like Kamara was dominating him all the way around. Leon put together a perfect sequence and and knocked uh, Kamara out. We won't take that from him. But what I see is the same thing that leading up to Charles, uh, all of Charles' uh, championship run. People kept saying he's a quitter. He's a quitter. They kept saying that about Charles. But, like, Leon, although he pulled it out, you know, and was able to get that KO, he was quitting on himself. He was sitting there. He had his hand. He was not looking at his Slump. coach. He had his back turned. And he Ejected. was like, yeah, just <laughs> like a little sourpuss. It's in him. It's in his coach kept telling him, why are you letting him bully you? Why are you letting him bully you? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Like, we shouldn't have to say that to you. So now you got a little confidence because you because you won the fight. Right, but that <laughs> little boy is inside of you. Mm. That little boy is there. That little boy that's being bullied by Kamaru that knows how hard it was, that knows that you couldn't get it done. It's Twice. he's in there. Yo, uh, on a real quick side note, shout out to Leon Edwards for actually talking trash finally, being like, I don't know about his like mental health after that KO. I'm worried about the kid. Had me dying. I was fucking lost. <laughs> It, it's funny listening to him talk too. I'd be like, "What he be saying?" <laughs> what he well, be talking about? <laughs> so he has like the worst UK accent, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is from the Birmingham, which is the the second largest um, uh, city in the UK, and they're just known as. Shout out to everyone in England, Birmingham. You know your bums though. Let's keep it one thousand. Oh, I actually hate the Liverpool accent. The Scousers. I hate the Scouser accent. What fucking Scouser? A Scouser can't really? get knocked out? Yo, know, man, yes, a Scouser can't get knocked out. It's impossible, eh, man. Where, isn't Darren Till a Scouser? He's a fucking Scouser. I rest my case. Yeah, I don't <laughs> fucking care. If anyone wants to get it, they can fucking get it, mate. I'll never forget that. Yeah. And Jorge Masvidal got it. <laughs> Enter the chat. Um... Yeah, I don't see this fight being entertaining. Hey, if Leon can get it done again, hats off to him. Hats off to him. If he can go inside there, first of all, and finish Kamaro, if he can go inside there um, and just outpoint him, hats off to him. I don't think, I don't see it happening, but anything is possible. Like CJ says, this is a fight. Anything is possible. If Leon Edwards gets a finish over Kamara Usman, since we're talking about hats off, I will do next week's podcast hats off. Hey, trust me, y'all don't want to see that. <laughs> y'all don't want to see that. 
Uh -huh. Okay. And then, uh, oh man, it's too bad. CJ, she, CJ ain't gonna take them glasses off to save the world, man. Hey, that's my, <laughs> hey, that's my, that's my vibe. Everywhere I'm on this thing, y'all haters ain't gonna be be able to see this. Blazing you know what? Shades. I can't wait until me and CJ adamantly disagree on another fight because I've got <laughs> I've got a bet. I've got to bet my mind. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Brandon Moreno versus uh, Pantoja. I'm sure you're going to go with Pantoja. Mm. Now nah, he know better. <laughs> he know better. He Check know my better. crystal ball. <laughs> Check hey. my crystal ball. It's one too many times he's been going against the Mexican fighters. He already know. Mm. He already mm. know. But what I was going to uh, harping back to this fight, if Kamaru knows something about watching Marab and him fight, that's what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. Straight pressure, straight pressure, straight pressure, homie. And then that's it, man. You know, go out there unscathed. Do what you got to do. Stop playing around. Don't be standing around with this guy. Take his ass down. Ground and pound. Live to, to fight another day, brother. Facts. Live to fight and another day. Facts. Really, what I've been predicting is... <laughs> I'm. This isn't what I'm predicting, but more so what I'm hoping for. Kamara Usman wins the fight. Calls out Bilal Muhammad, who does deserve it. He's on an eight-fight winning streak. That is the quote-unquote easiest matchup for Kamaru is Bilal Muhammad. Go ahead, do your thing with Bilal, and get the fuck out. Leave. There's a man named Shafkan Rachmanov that has a billet. Oh! Your head. Get out, Kamaru. Retire. We Listen, did you see that big man, him and George, him and Geoff? No, no, get up out of there. There's a man named Shavka Rachmanov that is coming from the mountains. Uh-uh, that's a bad man. Straight it's a assassin. bad man. I was running, Janae. <laughs> run, nigga, run. Don't want that smoke. What's uh? What's Bilal's rank right now? Where is he at? Bilal? Or two or five? Uh, oh, let me pull shit. It up He's right that high now. right now? No, ain't Kobe two? I don't know why the man ain't fought in over a year. <laughs> That's yeah, right. They got, got Bilal at four and Hamzad at three. Mm. Bilal's on an eight-fight winning streak. And Bilal has beaten Steven Thompson, Sean Brady, Vicente Luque. Did he fight Neil Magny? Who in, hasn't in beat Neil Magny? I'm, I'm pretty sure that he has. So he's fought people in the top 15 and won. Hamzad has beat Gilbert Who? Byrne. Don't do them like that. I, now y'all never... know who? Y'all know I like. Don't you start calling him names. Y'all know I like. I fuck with Chamaev, but at the same time, like Bilal deserves it. He has been going through killers in this division, like R running off those names. I'm like, yeah. Okay, so cool. let me ask you this: You talk about paying for your eighty bucks. Mm -hmm. Are you more likely to give eighty bucks to see um, Uzman being if he wins against Mohammed? Or Usman against a big cum shot? Oh, I mean, of course I'm going to pay to see a cum shot. Pause. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey. <laughs> you set shout, that up. Shout out to everyone on the, on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, of, of course that's going to sell more. But at the end of the day, um, I mean, what do you want Bilal Muhammad to do? Who Have else? Have a personality. Do he does have a personality. People hate him, mm. and that's that's mm. enough to get them emotional. But that's when not I, true. Let me tell you. Wait, when I post about Bilal, I get ten times the amount of comments and hate than <laughs> when I post about anybody else. <laughs> okay, but when you talk about people, don't people don't care about him? You talk about hate. That's what people that's feel. True. That's what y'all feel about Kobe. Y'all have a visceral dislike for Kobe. You know what I mean? When he lost. Barely, there was there was there was a cheering from from the high heavens. You were cheering too before you started this man crush. Shout out to Kobe! I can't wait to see you again, champ. Yeah, I literally think you're doing this just for the camera. Like I really think he's doing this for the camera. You guys, like, don't even listen to him anymore. It's ridiculous. You know what, Scott? I don't think that a lot of motherfuckers like him, and they think he's like super, super, super good. No, I'm talking specifically about Jace. <laughs> I like. I can, I can see how I can see how he like him though. I can see how he fuck. Him. I, I I think he for sure likes can acknowledge uh, Kobe's talent because he is very talented. But this yes. newfound 
oh, I like Kobe Covington. Like, I want you guys to know. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. First of all, I don't sound like that. I'm a grown ass <laughs> man. Stop it. <laughs> Voice can get die if I tried. When Second I tell y'all that this is Kobe, new. Kobe makes you want to watch his fights, whether you love him or hate him, right? He has a very dynamic personality. You know, it's very polarizing. It's almost like a Trump. You fuck with him or you don't. You don't feel, eh, he's okay. Most people, how they feel about Bilal Muhammad is that, eh, yeah. Like, you know, you don't really don't fucking care because he, he, he has a personality of a, of a, a fingernail. You know, he, <laughs> he, he, he's plain oatmeal. He is raisin bran without the raisin. It's like, you just really what, don't care. What did Stringer Bell say? If he's like 50 degree weather or something like that, it's like <laughs> nobody bats an eye at him. It's not raining. It's not a beautiful day. It's just a day. You know what I'm saying? I get what you're saying on that, though. I definitely get what you're saying. And in and, and a real quick second, I mean, shout out to The Wire. <laughs> You know, but you want to know what's crazy to me is that, like, I don't, like, I'm not, like, a Bilal Muhammad fan, but, like, I like Bilal. Like, when he made it through Vicente, Vicente Luque, I, I was shocked. I thought for sure Vicente was going to get him out there. But when he went up against Sean Brady, everybody, uh, remember, Sean Brady was undefeated. He was running mm -hmm. through everybody. And I was like, dang, y'all really going to feed Bilal to him? Like, he can't get a shot? Like, y'all really going to make him fight this man? Came out there, TKO finished, looked like a completely different Bilal. We don't never really see him stand up and strike like that. Like, we got to give him some respect. And it's like, I, I, what else does he have to do? Eight fights? Eight? And, and, and you know, me and Sky both had the pleasure of meeting him. He's a super nice guy. I think his yeah. real, like, <sighs> His real issue is, and I just thought about this right now, this wasn't preconceived, was that his entire, like his face looks like an entire Mr. Potato Head just shoved on his face. And that's what I think just fucks people's mind up about him. I just thought of that. And that's just true. It's facts. <laughs> think about his face. Think about Mr. Potato Head. That's all I'm saying. Imagery. Uh, Imagery. You're kind of right, though. I know that that's what makes it bad. Um, Can we bring that up on the screen? <laughs> Below Muhammad's face. Okay. Oh man. Uh, I don't know why y'all doing Bilal like that. I mean, listen, this is good for him. People are talking about him. Yeah, yeah. People are talking about him. <laughs> and can we split screen that with Mr. Potato Head? Please? So okay, so 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 what happens if uh if um Leon wins? Uh, you, know, you, you still have this, the, the, the same feeling about that guy having Bilal get that shot too, or you want somebody else there? Absolutely, I think Bilal should get the shot. Unfortunately, oh, I think they got to run it back anyway. The poke in the eye, I didn't even think exactly. about that. Yeah, exactly. and that's another thing. Like, I posted that clip, that clip went crazy, and people are in there talking shit about Bilal. But the reality is, is that people are living in this fantasy world where they're like, oh, uh. Leon won the first round, so the same thing was going to happen. I'm sorry. Michael Chandler and Charles Oliveira just entered the chat. Then I had somebody tell me, oh, you can't compare Charles and, and Michael Chandler because Michael Chandler has low fight IQ. You don't even know what the fuck that means. You're not even a fighter. Just shut up with the same... Everybody rhetoric, the yeah. same rhetoric and narrative going on. Oh, they don't have like you hear one person say it and then you just run off with it and y'all just keep regurgitating the same shit. Y'all don't even know what the fuck y'all talking about. Stop it. Right? And I like I I hate that too, is because they were like, ah, he has no fight IQ. Bro was a champion in Bellator. Right. It's not he like he <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Like, dude's a, a a good fighter. He was a champion before, he's been in wars before. It's like Let's just stop spewing stuff. You know what? It it's a lot of you, we on here with a lot of young kids and stuff, Sky. So, <laughs> well, life, I think, don't be lifing. I think people like we need to remind ourselves what Michael Chandler said. He is here for a good time, not no. for a long time, right? right? He's coming here, you know, because he knows that his career is pretty much over. You know what I mean? Um, but he has promised and he has delivered on every fucking thing he said he was going to do. And that's why he's got red panty night. Yes, he could have a high fight IQ, you know what I mean, and take people down and wrestle them, you know what I mean? Would we care about him as much? Would he be so beloved? No, he nope. would not. Nope. The fact that this guy is ready to die or be killed, you know what I mean? It's like what makes him must-see TV. Period.
Period. You do not want to miss a Michael Chandler fight. You're not going to be like, eh, I'll wait. Uh, no, like if a Michael Chandler fight's going on, I'm not going to get a drink. I'm not going to get no popcorn. I'm sitting my ass down. I got to see what's going on. Um, But yeah, like in that fight, he beat Charles. Uh, 10 more seconds. Charles is out of there. The fight's over. First another round. Ref- potentially another referee in that fight's over, you know? Um, And then come out the second round, boom. Knocks him out. Fast forward to Tony Ferguson versus Chandler. He was beat. Tony was actually winning. Tony actually won that first round. The first strike through in the second round, Michael Chandler, football kick, kills Tony. Like, you guys, the first round does not dictate a five-round fight. You have no idea what's going to happen. You guys have no idea. So everybody who's like, oh, but... And then they start talking about, like, oh, Leon... Um, the difference is Leon had the has... um. Uh, knockout power and Bilal doesn't. When was the last time Leon knocked somebody out? They're both fucking decision machines. Stop it. Stop just saying stuff Be- and with no nothing to back it up. You're just talking. Cool. Uh, shall we get to a few questions? Uh, we do have a couple of hot takes. Please. Drop some hot takes. Um, let's see. Which one do we have? Let's run with Sean O'Malley would only be champion if he's awarded more BS judge decisions. Facts. Straight facts. I think that that's absolutely absurd. The reason I think it's absurd is because you guys act like um, <laughs> like, the, like, one. <laughs> like, like the commission. Exactly. It's only been one. First of all. And second if, of all if you think that, you know. And y'all act like the commission is owned by the UFC. The Nevada State Commission is like, that includes all the combat sports, not just like the UFC. So you're saying they're like, oh yeah, let's go ahead and pay just for uh, Sean O'Malley to win. Listen, money makes people do crazy things. Not trying to be a conspiracy theorist out there. Shout out every Bravo, but money makes people do crazy things. Uh, Khabib's dominance is actually overrated. CJ. <coughs> um, I don't think it's overrated. I don't like them. I don't like him personally. I don't think it's overrated because you know why? A lot of people say the people that the, they fought this person, they fought this person. He could have went in there and lost the fight. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? He could have went in there and lost. So, you know, he went in there, he won his fights. It is what it is. That's it's not overrated to me. And I mean, how many rounds did he actually lose? In general, that's called dominance. For me, this is the best hot take question so far. <laughs> um, uh, yes, his dominance is overrated. How? Uh, when I think about the people, you, you, I mean. When you start talking about go to goats and king of kings, shout out to Triple H. Um, you you have to really dissect the resume. You know what I mean? And again, yes, he finished twenty nine and zero. But I think to myself, like twenty two of these fighters I've never heard of in life. You know what I mean? He's got like two solid fucking wins, three solid wins. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think his dominance is overrated. Um, you know, he didn't have the longevity as some of these other people. So I'll, I'll say yes. So you're saying his win over Edson Barbosa was under, was overrated. His mauling of Michael Johnson was overrated. Well, shit. Wait, wait, wait. Michael Johnson almost got him out of there. Doesn't matter. He then proceeded to lay on top of that man and tell him I deserve it and beat the crap out of him. Fair. Uh, but well, again, I just want to be sure that you're saying that that was overrated. So, so let's just pause here for a second because Michael Johnson's career, you know, you know what he has in common with s- s- Southern California, Magic why? Mountain, roller coasters. But why do we have to rate him against the people he fought? He only fought the people they signed him up for. Because you're only as good as the people that you fight. But you can wait, only wait. start from the back and work your way up to the top. Fair. So you're going to fight people who don't have these 
big resumes that you guys are like talking fair about. but there are people when you look at and like dissect like a gsp right and you can look at defending his title you know what i mean what 10 12 times you know what i mean but uh the, the he, murder he got his title fight this was a different era in ufc people were able to come in and get title fights two and three four fights into uh coming into the ufc that's what makes it different if he had to go and be on an eight fight winning streak before he ever got his title fight that's completely different like max holloway i'm always going to find a way to bring him up had to win 10 fights in a row just to get an interim title shot and only got that because somebody because the main event ended up getting pulled out so like you can't compare like even like when you look at the welterweight division with Kamaru Usman it's like Kamaru had to win how many fights before he was able to get his title shot but you can right because sh shout out to Izzy what, what about him Izzy had three fights before he fought for the belt four tops who said he was the GOAT? No, no, you're talking, but you were talking about just fighting for the title. That's what you were talking about. Well, but, no, I, you're, I, but I also think that goes defenses. with goes with how the division is going at the time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Agreed. So look at look at middleweight right now. It's trash. It's been trash for a while. It's like, <laughs> no, you I'm, know. I'm super, I'm more excited for this rematch than any other middleweight fight in a while. Oh, since they but, first fall. <laughs> but wait, but the question was his dominance. His dominance, not, not GOAT go. status or yes. nothing. So Habib for me, won. I... But when you say his dominance, generally speaking, it's predicated on this greatness. You know what I mean? Um, so I just think to myself, um, yes, he was obviously undefeated in the fights that he had had. Shot out. You know, there's no hate. I actually like the Dagestanis, you know what I mean? Um, but I just think when we're talking about greatness, the way people talk about him, they talk about him in like um, mythical, a mythical way, folklore. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 like yeah. he's William fucking Wallace, you know what yeah. I mean? Oh, like he's no untouchable. Ever... Yes, yeah. untouchable. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, he was untouchable. I think he might have only lost one round on the judges scorecard. That's what we're talking about, dominance. We're not talking about GOAT. I, I had a I, I had a hot take about him. I don't know if you if I wrote it in there and I sent it in. Mm -hmm. I wrote in there that Habib is an amazing, the best of the best grappler, right? But he's not an amazing fighter, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, he's amazing at what he does. He's the best of all the best, and nobody's gonna be able to touch him at that. But as a fighter, he's not really. All of well that rounded. to me well personally, well-rounded, yeah. right? Yeah, I go I back that. and I watch his fights and I watch him in the strike, and I'm like, This is y'all king, this is who, who y'all going to. So he gets into what he does, and he is the best, and nobody's ever gonna touch him at that. And I'm not gonna be a hater and be like, Oh, he sucked at this and this and this, because he does that thing to the top of the mountain. But in the other aspects of fighting, he was just kind of mid to me, to me. And if y'all hate me, it is what it is. You can hate me now. Yeah. Gang, gang. But, but that's, just my, that's just my hot take. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I can agree to that extent. He wasn't a good striker. You know, like. Those subpar. That, I put subpar. I'm sorry to cut you subpar. off. Subpar. Yeah, absolutely. But at the end of the day, he like you said, he was efficient in what he did. And mm -hmm. wrestling has just proved to be the best mixed martial arts in mixed martial arts. Like, mm -hmm. if you have that wrestling back background, you've been wrestling since you were six, seven years old. I mean, they're just, they're like, as long as you can close the distance safely and get this person down, it, it, it's a wrap. One more hot take before we go. Knees to the head of a down opponent should be legal. However, soccer kicks and stumps should stay illegal. Go ahead, Jace. Oof, um, that's that. That's that's a tough question. That's a tough question. The thing is, is like, like, how violent do you really want this, right? So I'm an old school. I'm an old school pride. nigger. I'm an old school nigger watching Pride. You know, everyone knows Vanderlei Silva. You know, his nickname was the Axe Murderer. That wasn't no, because he name. walked with his axe to the ring. He was known for axe kicks to ground opponents. 
and that shit is brutal to watch, dude. Um, so I guess for me, I'm gonna say no, no, and no. <laughs> for all three. Um I'm kinda it's not necessary. I don't think it's that necessary. You know, we're not missing too much on it. But on the flip side, it would kind of nullify some of this wrestling that's going on. You know, people shooting in on their knees. They can throw knees at that point. They're crotch grabbing. We can throw the knees right there. You press up, up against the cage and, and they start playing that tip tap hand on the ground, hand not on the ground, hand on the ground. I think when it comes to that point, it's like what's half an inch up the difference between half your inch on the damn mat. What's the difference in between that? A magnum. Yeah. <laughs> 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 LaShawn, LaShawn Strickland has just looked the chat, ladies. He strikes and again. He strikes again. LaShawn. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think if they're playing that pitter patter game, if you're playing with your hands on the ground like that, Man, let him throw the knee right there. Like you're not a down opponent at that point in time. What you what you think, guy? I think so. I think like even if they modify that rule, like your knees have to your knees have to be touching the mat in order for you to be a downed opponent. Yes. Because that hand thing, like you see people do it and they just stand they're standing up literally with their hand on the ground, just looking <laughs> up at the dude, like, Yeah, uh, uh, you gonna let me up? Um, yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, but I think I agree with CJ. Like, it's not necessary. Like, it's not necessary. And if you want to see that, one championship still allows knees to a down opponent. Ryzen still allows soccer kicks and stumps. Headbutts. Really? Yeah. Ryzen allows headbutts. Yeah. Brutal. That's not cool. Brutal. <laughs> Yeah, uh no, like for me, I don't I don't necessarily want to see it like because I remember uh like Danny was scrolling through Instagram and she had seen some stuff started coming through from one and she was like, Oh my god, and she was like freaking out. She's like, Why is this so violent? And I was like, Oh, well that's that's one. They have different set of uh regulatory rules than the UFC does because like you, there was a video of a guy who like had him inside control and was just kneeing him in the head. Like I I don't I don't, I personally say no, but you know. Fair. So before we get out of here, I got one question to ask y'all. It just popped up to me when we were talking <clears throat> a little bit earlier. Um, and it's about officiating. Question is, should referees officiate fights differently with championships versus non-championship fights? As in what? What, like, what do you mean? Like, would do you want the ref to give a little bit more or to wait another half a second longer when it's a championship fight? You know, or they say, oh, like, I know my opponent can take more damage because his reputation precedes him. You know what I mean? Because um, I feel like I see a difference when refs do the first two or three cards of the night as opposed to main event cards. No, I think everything should be unbiased. I don't care if this fighter could take mad more damage than this fighter over here. You know this fighter can do this over here if it's a chance. You got to try to ref everything as the same playing field as much as possible, right? Because then people will start coming and be like, oh, I could take more damage. You knew I could take more damage. I don't know what the hell you can take. You know what I'm saying? So pause. everything, big pause. <laughs> we got to try to keep everything on the same level playing field as much as possible. Because I, then that that then it comes. Herb Dean thinks I can do one thing better than this person, and then this referee could thinks I could do something better than this person, and that's all judgment call. You know what I'm saying? I 100% agree with <laughs> CJ. Um, the their job is to protect the fighter at all times. I don't I don't care. Like even though like when people were like, oh, when Diaz eye cut open, it's like, oh, that the doctor should have let it keep going. Because Diaz always bleeds. I'm not, that's not what he's supposed to be doing. He's not supposed to be t looking at people's medical records and being like, well, you know, he always bleeds. So I'm just going to let him get. No, it's like if the cut is too dangerous and it's going to cause additional um, harm. Trauma, harm, then the fight must be stopped. Like, sure. I, I don't think that a championship should be um, that you should right. let a champion 
uh, go further rather than you would um, a, a regular fight. Because at the end of the day, they're still human beings that are taking damage. And that's what you're there for, to protect the fighter at all times. Fair. What about you? Um, well, actually. You just want to be a contrarian right now. I can feel it coming. <laughs> I can feel you getting ready just to, just to go rogue. I just wanted to take the time and opportunity to, to thank you both for at least one time this show being right. Because I actually agree. <laughs> I actually agree. <laughs> Mark that date and time. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe it. I just knew you were going to go left with it. Yo, Sky, you still got the thing he said about Cyril Gone uh, beating John Jones? You still got that queued up somewhere? <laughs> we got to play that. We got to keep playing that when he, he gets to talking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, on the last podcast, you see, I just put the whole little <laughs> clip up there. That was so fun. I was rolling. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then had the nerve not to show up the 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 pod before to give his official prediction. I was out of town. No, you was locked in. You was locked in with Cyril gone. I was uh, jet setting. Getting John Jones out of there, TKO in him. Dude, it's not what I said. It's not what that's, I said. That's exactly what you no, said. No, I Finish called you. I called you and told you that I believe. I, I Did I not no, call you no, and tell I, you? I you called, called you. You called and said you weren't going to make it on the pod because you were out of town. I said, do you want to give me an official prediction to say? You said, I'll get back to you. I still have a, I still have five hours and you never contacted me. The day before I called you and said I had this dream that John Jones is going to choke him out. That's what I told you. Uh, what is this? You guys. Don't, don't, don't play. You, you are telling lies. Play, play don't play. Play don't play. Stop. Play don't play. Stop. Play don't play. You guys. This is, you better not leave me here. This is, play, play, I ain't DJing. Play, play don't play. Oh, I'm so sick of you. I called you the day before and told you. Oh, my God. I had a nightmare that literally John Jones is going to choke him the fuck out. And I said, he's going to walk over his body just like he did Leota Machina. Did I not no, tell you, you that? Did I not start. tell you that? Okay, you guys. We're going to have to end this pod. Yes, Jace. <sighs> Jace is in a whole nother. I remember, I remember CJ getting on here and talking about how he had a dream about John Jones and the fight going. I don't recall. I called you. you. Uh huh. Yeah. You got a music now. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. but, it, but if that okay. happened, listen, All right. CJ, if that actually happened, don't you think that Jace would have got on here the the pod the after the fight that he was on and said, "I called you and I had a dream." You know he would have said that. See, but look, look. We got video evidence. <laughs> it's recorded, bro. It ain't what you get. What you? What's the truth? Is what you can prove. You feel me? <laughs> Sound like a man who been to prison. <laughs> oh, what you can prove. Fact. Thanks. And what we will prove is that we will be back here on Sunday. What? That's right. You don't have to wait for us to pop up on Wednesday. We're going to be back on Sunday to start recapping the fights uh, so that we can dedicate the Wednesdays to really getting into the next upcoming fight. So we'll be back. We'll be giving you guys our quick, instant reaction of what takes place at UFC 286. Will Leon Edwards get it done again? Or will Kamaru Usman continue to be the Nigerian nightmare that's in Leon's life? We'll find out next week. And we are out. Peace.